Good morning. It's a Friday. I know it's been a long week. Huh? Well, welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis, and we've got your HCC news and information. A lot going on this half hour. Glad to have you with us. Frank Cooper's my co-host. He's joining me from his home studio. Good to see you, Frank. Happy Friday, boss man. What's going on with you? Happy Friday. It's going to be, it's a beautiful day outside. It's going to be a beautiful weekend as well. We want to remind everybody you're watching us on Facebook Live and YouTube. We appreciate you joining us. You can catch our rebroadcast on HCC TV. And Frank, they can always find us in social media. Absolutely. So right now we're streaming live on Facebook, HCC District. If you uh if you if you scroll to the to YouTube, hit the notification button. Sorry, that's my dog in the background. Hit my, hit my notification button for HCC up to the minute for all the latest episodes, Monday through Friday. We're also on Twitter and LinkedIn. So check us out. All right, Frank's dog's in the background. We'll have to see him later on in the show. All right, Frank, stick around. We're going to meet your guest in a second. But first, we're going to take you out live. Our new Katy campus is getting ready to open for business. They're having a ribbon-cutting ceremony today. And we're joined now by Dr. Zachary Hodges, the president of HCC's Northwest College. Good morning, Dr. Hodges. Big day for you. Hey, good morning, Todd. Yeah, it is a big day. Uh, we are right in the middle of all this activity, so... It is an exciting day for Houston Community College, opening our new Katy campus. You know, I asked how late did people stay last night, and it really wasn't that late. So we were prepared, and so here we go, open for students in the far west side. Dr. Hodges, I know this has been going on for quite some time, getting this new campus online. You're expecting some students this summer, and but you got a, a full slate of, uh, of students in the fall, especially with a number of programs you're offering with U of H. Yeah, absolutely. We are wide open for the summer, too. Uh, we're in, you know, we'll make the move from our old campus to this campus next week. And we're greeting students at both locations starting Monday. So, uh, yeah, U of H is right across Colonial Parkway from us. We're near the intersection of I-10 and the Grand Parkway. And uh, it's a great location for students to get a four-year degree, two-year degree, or certificates from Houston Community College, uh, however they want to do it, starting Katie, finishing Katie. It's a big day for Houston Community College, but it's a big day for the Katie community. It certainly is. Dr. Hodges, I know you've got a lot of going on there. We appreciate you joining us this morning. Congratulations on getting things open and have a great time at the ribbon cutting today. Thanks, Todd. Um, well, get on out here. So uh, ribbon cutting 11 o'clock. All right, Dr. Hodges, thanks for being here. Have a great ribbon cutting. You bet. All right. We are going to uh, be interviewing a couple of other guests on the show. First off, we've got Alex Bentley. He is with Culture Map. He's the film critic and our Film Friday guest. Alex, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you today? Well, I'm doing great. We're looking forward to hearing from you. I know it's a big weekend for film openings. I've seen a couple of them that you're going to talk about shortly, but one of them, this Doctor Strange film, boy, it looks great. Yeah, it's really interesting film. I'm, I'm looking forward to talking about it. All right, Alex, we're going to be with you in about 10 minutes. Stick around. We're going to take you out now, though. Our HCC Digital Communication Department, they are playing a big role in tonight's big event, the fashion show out at the Central College. Andrea Millette joins us. She's the program coordinator. Welcome, Andrea. Good morning. Now, before we get to the behind the scenes of this and how the fashion photographers will be working with this, um, tell us a bit about the courses in the digital photography program that are currently offered. Sure. So we are a specialization degree under the digital communication program. So digital photography is our major and we are considered a workforce program. So our students have training from the very beginning on uh, more or less how to become professional photographers. So we teach them all about obviously the cameras, but we teach them professional lighting and portraiture is a strong component of our program. So um that's where we kind of get connected to this fashion. I know you mentioned the cameras. Of course, everybody knows photography is going to use digital cameras, but uh, what other types of equipment do you guys use? So um, most of our students come with their own cameras, but in our studio that's out at the A-Leaf campus, we have a full um, sort of uh, collection of really advanced um, battery powered strobe units. So they learn um, pretty much your standard studio quality lighting. 
We've got all the light modifiers that you could uh, dream of, and most of our courses uh, utilize pretty much all of the equipment we've got out there. And how does the fashion show help our students? Uh, what exactly are they going to be collaborating on with uh, the group tonight? So it's pretty cool. So part of our curriculum is definitely learning, you know, the lighting aspect. So if you kind of think about how the show's Project Runway, they end up um, kind of photographing the models and everything. But we also have a photojournalism class, and that is all about event photography. So this does a great job of sort of tying together those two things, knowing and understanding lighting, but also being able to go out and cover uh, an event. And because this is live this time, this is going to be really um, really exciting and put their kind of thinking skills and problem solving skills to use in, in real time. And this is going to help them with getting that real world experience, I imagine as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. So a lot of our students go on to, um, you know, very entrepreneurial minded and they will go on to maybe do their own portrait and wedding businesses. So an event is, you know, a wedding and that's kind of exactly what um, they're going to be sort of needing to think on their feet and cover just like an event like tonight. So this is a great experience um, for them to get some of that hands on I know we've hired a few photographers uh, here at HCC TV, and I know we do have one currently working as one of our interns as well. It does a great job. Um, do the students get to leave um, HCC with a great portfolio to help them find work? Because I know when I'm looking to hire someone, I don't care if they if they've shot you know, cover photos for Walmart, Vogue, or their mom. I look and see what their quality of work is. And it realistically, some of the best work is, is never seen on the cover of Vogue or any major magazine. It's seen, you know, when a student gets a chance to present that. So these students get to go out with a, with a great portfolio that can help them get work. Yeah, ideally, that's exactly um, the point. So all of the programs, whether it's graphic design, visual effects and motion graphics, or digital photography in our program, have a portfolio development class that is their capstone. So the idea is they spend, you know, one of their final semesters really cultivating that um, book to yeah. be um, something that shows their skills, their creativity. And, and that is the thing that the professional world does look at. Um, yeah. You know, we stress the degree and the education, but it comes down to a lot of times that portfolio. Yeah, I mean, you're just looking for that look, the uniqueness and the different way of seeing things that this person may or this photographer may see. Talk about some of the things they'll be doing tonight with behind the scenes. Will they be doing some uh, photos that will be placed online in the future to give people a glimpse behind the curtain? Yeah, so we're kind of doing three things today with the whole process. Um, we're going to be starting photographing behind the scenes of the Glam Squad. So they've got makeup from the cosmetology department, you know, coming in. We're going to do behind the scenes of um, even the filmmaking students as they're setting up their lighting and their gear for the day. Um, we're also going to be doing some live shots during the actual um, live streaming event. So during the, the catwalk kind of process. But we're also going to be doing some stills of the, um, the clothing and the, and the um, collections to document them for, for the fashion design program. So ultimately, that's the thing that fashion design department wants from us are, are those, you know, documentary um, photographs for the collections. But, but we're also going to be doing a lot of other stuff during the day. You know, I, I, I think I can see an exhibition in the future of the behind the scenes of a fashion event for you guys. Is that something that we might be able to see? Yeah, that'd be great. And it's neat because we helped with the fashion promotions show last fall. And I've actually started printing out a lot of those photographs to hang around the A-Leaf campus to kind of show, you know, this is, these are some of the exciting things that you, um, that we get to do in this program. We're going to uh, put some links to tonight's program in our social media post because it will be live streamed tonight. And Andrea will also put some information on the digital photography program and digital communications in our social media posts as well. Andrea Millette, program coordinate, coordinator for HCC's digital communications. Thanks for being here on the show this morning. Thanks for having me. All right. Good luck tonight. Okay. We're going to turn things over to Frank. Frank, we're going to talk films on Friday. 
why don't you go ahead and take it away? I got some good ones to talk about. Absolutely, ladies and gents. Moving on to Alex Bentley, Culture Map film critic and our Film Friday guest. Alex, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. So for those who don't know me, I'm a, I'm a huge film critic, so I'm really excited to have you on the show. <laughs> um, and more importantly, we have a we have another MCU uh, movie coming out. Uh, I believe it came out last night. Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, man. Tell me, what are your thoughts about it? What do you expect for it to do? Well, it, it's going to be huge, of course. It, every Marvel movie is. You know, I, I'd come to peace with the Marvel movies over the years. At first, I hated that you had to see every single movie in order to keep up with the connected stories. But starting around Guardians of the Galaxy, they started making consistently good movies, so I didn't mind it as much. Um, unfortunately, I may be a dissenting voice here, but it seems like the powers of B are back to not knowing what they're doing, for me at least. Uh, Doctor Strange and the ridiculously long title <laughs> has, a, has a weird tone right from the start. And to me, it just never feels interesting or exciting. Uh, you know, they throw in some cameos. I won't spoil them here, of course. Uh, that might have hardcore fans in a tizzy, but in the context of the film, they didn't seem to mean that much. Um, I'm not, I'm just not a big fan of Benedict Cumberbatch in this role uh, for some reason. Uh, here he especially seems to be going through the motions, and of course, literally, since Doctor Strange has um, magic, has his features a lot of elaborate hand movements. Um, but there is a new character called America Chavez, played by Sochil Gomez, that brings something new to the table. I wouldn't mind seeing more from both that character and the actor. Yeah, and I know once once Avengers Endgame ended and, you know, we had the, the, ex, the exiting of Captain America and and Iron Man and um, and Black Widow, I was a bit fearful because those guys carry the franchise for the better part of the yeah. first 10 years. So my, my main concern is how, how is the next 10 years going to be with this flush of new characters, you know, with the Tom Death of, you know, yeah, it's, it's just some, as well. It's just some baby steps getting into what, what they're going to do next. And I think they're just try, still trying to feel things out. Uh, to me, this did, wasn't very successful, but I've, I've seen other reviews that, that, that praise it to the hills. So, you never know. It's obviously up to the, the viewer's opinion. Okay. Okay. Well, ladies and gents, it's out this weekend, so check it out. I would definitely be checking it out this Saturday. So, um, Alex, tell me about everything, everywhere, all at once. Yeah, I, I didn't think Doctor Strange made great use of the multiverse concept overall. Uh, something that especially stood out because everything, everywhere, all at once did such a phenomenal job of bringing it to the screen. Uh, in that film, a Chinese-American family led by Michelle Yeoh is undergoing an IRS audit for their laundry business. But that audit turns into an adventure that boggles the mind and assaults the senses in a good way for me. Uh, Yo and her family are transported to a series of increasingly bizarre universes that place their characters in all manner of crazy situations, including ones where characters have hot dogs for fingers, uh, another one where everything bagel is worshipped as a deity. It sounds really strange, but... The creativity the filmmakers show in the multiverse is kept grounded by the storyline of the family itself, which makes the movie as emotional as it is fantastical. It's not hey, to Frank, me. Hey, Frank, I got to jump in here real quick. Yeah, yeah, go one ahead. One thing, I'll, I'll, I don't want to give a lot away, but I will mention, did you recognize who played her husband in that movie? Oh, yeah. Because he's, he was in Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull. He was the little kid. Uh, and, and, yeah, and the Temple of Doom, and, and the Temple and, of Doom, yeah, right. And then he was also in the Goonies, and it's it's been forever since we've seen him, and it's so great. He he really carries the movie for that for his character. He sure does. Yeah, boy, what a great movie. Okay, Frank, go ahead. I just had to oh, jump. Wow. In here. <laughs> well, well, it's it's not to me the main character in the in his family should have been the Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness movie. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? No, it's not to me the main character in her family should have been the Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness uh, movie. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. So everyone's talking about Nicolas Cage and his performance and the unbearable weight of massive talent. What's your take on that? Yeah, and speaking of crazy, uh, it's it's another film with a ridiculously long title, of course, but <laughs> it's a really fun movie that plays with the reputation Nicolas Cage has built up throughout his career. Uh, Cage stars as a version of himself who accepts an invitation to show up at a man's birthday party for $1 million. That man, in addition to being the biggest Nicolas Cage fan in the world, is also part of a drug cartel that the CIA is trying to infiltrate. Of course. Uh, they, they recruit Cage to be that person, and the film hopscotches through a variety of genres from family drama to buddy comedy to an all-out action film. Uh, you know, Cage is sent up in a loving way. He references everything. Uh, the movie references everything from Face Off to Moonstruck to Captain Pirelli's Mandolin. And it appear, he appears game for whatever off-the-wall antics are asked of him. I, I kind of wish they had gone a little weirder with the storytelling choices, but overall, the movie is a lot of fun. 
I think it's kind of cool, man, for for a legendary Hollywood actor to make light of himself in an actual movie about his life or remnants of his life. I think that's that's pretty dope. Yeah, and I just read an article about or heard a, a podcast about the, the the directors. That was their only choice. You know, they, they made the movie for him, and if he couldn't do it, then all their efforts would have gone to waste. But fortunately, uh, he he was up for it. Imagine being writers and like not asking Nick Nicholas first, but <laughs> taking months to write a script only for him right. to be like. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would have been unfortunate, but uh, I, I'm really glad they, they were able to convince him. Now, was, what do you think about the Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore? Yeah, you know, it's another huge movie I couldn't stand. Uh, this Harry Potter spinoff series has been oddly bad from the start. Yeah, probably because Potter author J.K. Rowling wrote the first two movies herself. Her, her writing skills don't really translate between mediums. Um, the man who wrote all the Potter movies, Steve Cloves, took over for this film but he was working from an earlier rolling script, so there wasn't much he could do. Um, the storytelling in this film and the series as a whole, it's just too convoluted. Instead of getting Potter fans what they want, which is a feeling of wonder from the magic, they love the story down with all sorts of dark storylines that, that just never seem to connect. Jude Law, though, he, he makes for a nice young Dumbledore. I, I just wish he had a better movie around him. So do you feel like the, the Harry Potter community um thus far has embraced this these prequel series. I know Harry Potter was such a big, massive hit for yeah. like 15 years. In, in general, I mean, it still made a ton of money, it, but it's kind of been decreasing to, uh, from, um, from the first movie to now the third movie. They're, I think they planned five movies overall. I, I think they're, it's, people are just getting exasperated, wishing they would give them better stories overall. Go ahead, Todd. Oh no, I was I, I was agreeing. I'm just listening with it. Oh, uh, let's ask you about the bad guys. That you know, it kind of piques my interest. Animated movie, not the biggest fan of those, but this one looked interesting. Yeah, it's one of the nice surprises of the year uh, so far. Uh, it's it's based on a series of graphic novels aimed at kids. Uh, somehow, I've never heard of those, even though I have a son in the Prime demo. Um, anyway, it's about a group of stereotypically bad animals: a wolf, a snake, a piranha, a shark, and a spider who try to turn good after years of being criminals. It, it has a really fun story that has a lot of appealing aspects for both kids and adults, which would be enough to make it stand out. But the animation for the film, it has a unique blend of 2D and 3D graphics that really make it pop. Uh, this is really noticeable in the eyes of the main characters. I, I really recommend the movie for anyone, whether or not you have kids. And finally, coming up this month and much anticipated, well, for some at least, the return of Downtown Abbey. What about that one? Yeah, you know, May is typically the month with blockbuster movies like Doctor Strange and the upcoming Top Gun Maverick. But it also has counter-programming like the Downtown Abbey movie, uh, which opens on May 20th. Uh, it's frankly amazing to me that a series that went off the air seven years ago has gotten not one, but two big screen movies. But since the first one made almost $200 million worldwide, there are clearly a ton of people who want to see it. I won't be one of those. It's not really my <laughs> cup of tea, but it's still impressive that Focus Features is competent enough to release it at a time normally reserved for tentpole movies. It, you know, if it does as well as expected, it could also continue the recent shift back toward in theater movie going. So far in 2022, there have been four movies, and Doctor Strange will be the fifth that have made more than $100 million. And that trend will only continue as we go through the summer. So, unlike in 2020 and 2021, if you want to see the movies everybody be talking about, you'll, you'll need to go back to the theaters again. I feel like well, I'm, I'm still hoping that they revive the series. I mean, let's get <laughs> down to it. You know, it's been off the air for seven years. Bring it back, though. Make some more money. Why not? <laughs> Alex, thank you so much for your time. Alex Bentley, Culture Map film critic and our Film Friday guest. We'll have more info in our post right after the show. And we'll remind our students about our own filmmaking program as well. Thank you so much, Alex. Thanks. Enjoy Dr. Strange. Thank Thanks, you. Alex. I don't know, Frank. You're not one that's going to be going to see Downton Abbey. Um, that was on PBS for a long time, right? Well, yeah, it was. Yeah, okay. I never saw okay. it on PBS though. I always watched it. Uh, I think it was on Netflix that I watched it. Yeah, I don't. I don't know much about that show. I just, I just know it used to come on. Like my nieces would watch Sesame Street, and like it, then they would come on, and I'd be like, "Well, what is this?" And then I'll, I'll just change the channel. But I never knew. <laughs> it was a, I never knew it was a big phenomenon until today. <laughs> you got it. Okay, Frank, that's your homework. Go back and get started in the first season. I guarantee you, you'll get engrossed to it. You'll be back on Monday talking about after you binge watch, you know, two or three seasons of it. You'll be back Monday talking to us about it. Isn't that? Isn't one of those? Isn't one of those seasons where it's like. 
the Netflix like 12 episodes or like 22 episodes, like like a network. There's a good, I can't tell you whether it's 12 or 22, but there's a good number of episodes every season. So, you know, go ahead, get started, bite the bullet. You will, (laughs) I I think you'll like it, Frank. I I do. All right. I'll give it a chance. I'll give it a chance. It's not a multiverse though. It could be. Yeah. All right. Tonight, uh, Euphoric Bloom is happening at our Central College. Make sure you join us then. Uh, The Art and Design Collective of of Consumer Arts and Science, COE, will live stream Euphoric Bloom. It's the first live fashion show since 2019. Congratulations on that. They've been doing a lot of stuff live streamed only. This one, they are having somewhat of an audience that's invitation only, but you can watch the live stream today, 6.30 p.m., 7 p.m. uh, The live stream event begins. Uh, HCC Central Campus is where it's going to be live streamed from, and we'll have some links in our social media posts. It'll be all over our social media, so you can watch it on Facebook Live and YouTube It's going to be pretty cool. Okay, Women's Wednesday Roundtable, Women Who Lead, Frank. That's happening uh, next week. Entrepreneurial Initiatives is offering an interactive series for women to share their expertise and experience in leadership. The next session is 12.30 to 2 p.m. Wednesday, May 11th, Storytelling Part 1 by Thea Golden-Smith. We'll have more information in our post right after the show is over with. Okay, another thing that's happening in person Uh, District-wide open houses, open. Students can get their help they need with district-wide open houses to give personalized support in program selection, enrollment, financial aid, student support services. You wanna get questions answered, you wanna sign up for some courses, get your financial aid in order, meet with an advisor in person. This is the time to do it. We're open for business, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Saturday, May 14th, multiple campuses, uh, just really just go to our main page, hccs.edu, and you can uh, get more information on this and join them a week from tomorrow. Also, uh, there's something called Open for Business Create Your Brand, and that's happening as well, Frank. I believe it's a workshop. Absolutely. So just as we just as we each make different impressions on different people, businesses have names, products, logos, and reputations that make up for their for what they're perceived as. HCC is open for business, offering a Create Your Brand workshop. That'll be from 2.30 to 4.30, Tuesday, May 17th. It's virtual. The speaker's name is Leanne Aguilar, CEO of the Empire Creative Marketing. We'll have more information about that and registration right there. I'll show it over with. Speaking of registration, fall registration is underway. The schedule's live. It's open to register for classes. You want to get financial aid? You have time to do that now. Um, Of course, summer registration is underway, but you can register for fall 2022. We have five ways to learn. Uh, Two of them are online completely. Two of them are hybrid, a little bit of online and in-person. And of course, in-person classes, you can take those as well. Main thing is go register today, hccs.edu slash apply. If you want to get in person, go to a campus anytime or go to our open houses next week week from tomorrow. Okay, Uh, before we get to next week's guest, we want to talk a little sports because, uh, Frank, some interesting things have been happening. You made the prediction last week. You said the Astros were going to flounder, but then they were going to start kicking it up again. They're starting to do that now, it seems like. Yeah, I mean, everything's coming together, man. I mean, I think they're getting healthy right at the right time. The bullpen's doing great. Um, I've noticed all throughout this kind of baseball, pitchers are not going deep in the games anymore. Like bullpens yeah. are being relied on a lot recently. So um, we're doing a good job. I'm, I'm hoping that our starters can go a little bit more deeper in these games, six, seven innings, like like they used to back in the day. Now, I'm, I'm seeing stat lines, guys going four or five innings now. Um, so when you give our bullpen a break, you know, come the long heat of the summer. Yeah. We'll well, I mean, when you guys. go four to five in, innings and, and the game is one, do they still give you a win? Yeah, I think for a quality start, I think you have to do five and a third, I believe. Okay. Okay. So you still can get that. Um, One thing I think Justin Verlander has put everyone on notice that he's back and in good form again. Justin's not human. Um, He's like pushing 40. He still has a a lot of bonus fastball, a lot of bonus on his, on his breaking stuff. Um, I mean, he's, he's special, man. He's special. I, I think Keep him healthy is going to be key because if he's healthy, you have a bona fide ace that can yeah. go, you know, one or two starts in a, a seven-game series and possibly, you know, come out the bullpen if need be. So keep him healthy is, is important. So I think for him, we got to keep his innings down coming off, coming off that Tommy John surgery and, and yeah. injuries and keep him fresh, you know, come August and October. 
He's looking good. And it's amazing because for a while, it didn't look like we were going to sign him. Um, it looked like he was going to go somewhere else. Asher was going to lose another quality player. But all of a sudden, his brother makes an announcement, I think, on Twitter, and he signed with the Astros. Yeah, it, it, it's ner- it was nerve-wracking, man, because, like, you know, it's hard to find good pitching, let alone top of the line, front of the rotation, yeah. good pitching. So I think bringing him was, was bringing back was very, very important. I mean, we have young arms as well coming, coming up, but like having that veteran presence in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in that pitching rotation and in the, on that team is vital. Yeah. And another thing that's vital is don't get the blue Jays in the playoffs. I don't think they want to <laughs> face uh Springer anymore. He's just using them for like a batting practice to, to hit home runs. I call them. I call Toronto the, the 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 second sons of great of great major league players of the past. I mean, you got Vladimir Guerrero Jr. there. You have Vigio's son there. You have yeah. um, uh, Bobby Witt's son there. I'm like, these guys are like, these, these are legendary names of, of great players from the past, man. But those guys, they can hit the ball and they, they can hit it hard. Yeah. So hopefully we won't face them in any playoff situation. Uh, okay, Frank. So you're going to see the multiverse this weekend. Your assignment is to watch Downton Abbey. I want you to at least start season one. Trust me on this. It, it gets how, many, good. how many seasons is it? There's like seven. Lord. You'll, you'll be good. Oh, come on now. You'll binge watch, you know, like uh, all types of things. Come on now. You just give it a give it a try, okay? If, if if I if I do this, then you gotta binge watch a show that of my of my picking too of my. Okay, well. I will do that. All right, okay. so you get to pick a show for me. Let me yes. know next week which show I, I need to watch. I and definitely then will. You have to binge watch Downton Abbey at least season one. And I'll do know. season one. Okay, I, I'll do season one. I report back. All right, make it through the first show. That's the main thing, Frank. Make it through the first show. All right. Okay. And multiverse, we'll report on that next week. We'll give you your, we'll give you our opinion on the Doctor Strange and the multiverse. I hear it's like a Marvel horror movie, so that should be interesting. I can't, I can't wait. I mean, I've been reading yeah. a lot of, I've been reading a lot of potential cameos from like past, you know, movies and past other film properties. So, yeah, I'm hoping something that comes true. Yeah, interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Okay, Mental Health Monday coming up. The Houston Area Parkinson Society will return to tell us about the latest advancements in research. And we've also got a guest from Coleman, Frank. Dr. Hubert Jackson of HCC Coleman College will join us to talk about the its award-winning respiratory therapy program. Yeah, that's been in the news since uh, with the whole COVID thing and people recovering from that. So well, big show on Monday. Have a wonderful weekend. Going to be beautiful weather, a bit hot, but we'll see you Monday morning live 10 a.m. for up to the minute.